Spam1, my homebrew CPU, has recently been sitting in the corner sulking because it's suffering from a case of feature envy. And the problem is that it's noticed that the ARM CPU has this great approach to conditional execution. In Spam1, the only conditional instructions are the jumps. But if we look at the ARM instruction encoding, we can see that it has a few bits on the left side of each instruction that provide the means to make any instruction conditional. The bits select which condition enables the execution or skipping of this instruction. And to complement this flexibility, ARM also includes a flag at bit 20 to control whether ARM updates the status register. And this generic approach seems much more powerful than having merely a few conditional jump instructions. Well, that's been causing a bit of a rethink for SPAM1. The current design and simulation in Verilog support just conditional jumps. If I make all instructions conditional, then I can ditch some of the special logic that I've got for jumps and I can generalize it and that makes me happy. Let's look back at SPAM1 and see what can be made simpler by adopting something like ARM's approach. Now, there's a bunch of devices that sit on the buses and the instruction needs to encode these devices. And this list shows all the devices in SPAM1's CPU. It shows what IDs they have. When SPAM1 wants to do a long jump, it needs to write to device 18, labelled PC, for program counter. And that updates the 16-bit program counter. But there's also a list of jump devices here. These devices work like PC in that they update both um, higher and lower bytes of the program counter, but they do it conditionally. Well, if I'm making all the instructions conditional, then I guess I can ditch this stuff. Well, at least I can ditch devices 19 through 28 and see if I can save a bit of space. So let's just move a few things around. We'll get rid of those first. And then we'll take these devices, move them up the table, take the program counter devices and pull them over here. Now, looking back at the instruction encoding, we've got this section at the top here, which encodes devices. And these now ought to take fewer bits because there are fewer slots in this table. And indeed, the destination now takes four bits and the two sources take three bits. And that leaves me a bit of space to um, use a few bits in the instruction to do some condition selection so I can do conditional execution. And there's also, of course, a bit of space there where I can throw in that um, flag control that um, ARM has got. So this is where we end up. We've got the same number of bits, but I've crammed a few extra features into the instruction. And of course, this change means a change to the hardware. And to figure out the control logic, I decided to give circuit versus spin. So let's just go across and look at that. So here's span one conditional instruction control logic. We've got some bits that will be driven by the instruction, which select which condition we're going to be dependent upon. And then we've got the status flags from the ALU. Now, let's say we wanted to be conditional on carry. Well, carry is bit one going into the multiplexer. So we'll select bit one. So the instruction would encode bit one there. And we can see that because carry is in inactive, this is active low logic. So one is an inactive carry. We've got a one on the output. Now one means skip the instruction. If carry had been low, meaning that carry was set, then the instruction would have been executed. It becomes a zero. And if we wanted to be conditional on negative, well, negative is bit four. So we, the condition would be set to four. And now we can see that the negative flag is toggling the output. So the output tracks the value of the negative flag. And we've also got this bit here at the top, bit zero, which is labeled as unconditional. And that's hardwired to zero, so that is always set. So whenever we want an instruction to be unconditional, we always set the condition to be condition zero, and the output will always be low. So that's how Span1's is going to be implementing its conditional instruction logic.